Something we're going to be talking about a lot this morning is petrol prices. You'd have heard that they are rising. Where are they at now? Well, Ben's taking a look at this. A record, another record, more are expected. But significantly, there's a marker, isn't there, when it comes to the average typical family car? Yeah. Every day we're talking about new records mm. being set and the expectation, as you say, that, that headline figure, it could cost £100 from today to fill up the average family car. Let me go through the details and explain why that is. A uh, very good morning to you from our virtual petrol station. Filling up this morning will cost you, on average, more than £1.80 per litre. That is a leap of more than two pence a litre since Monday, and the biggest single price jump in 17 years. It means the cost of filling an average petrol car, as I was mentioning, say, a Ford Focus with a 55-litre tank, is now more than £99. The RAC thinks the cost could reach an eye-watering £100 as soon as today. Diesel prices as well are at a record high, costing an average £1.86 per litre. The cost of filling an average family diesel car is already at more than £102. So why is this happening and how long could it last? Let's speak to Steve Williams from the RAC's Fuel Watch. Why are prices so high at the moment? Uh, the price of oil has uh, risen. Uh, it's around about $130 a barrel, uh, and the exchange rate is low. Unfortunately, that's really important because uh, fuel, like oil, is traded in dollars. So we always need the pound to be as strong as possible against the dollar. And at the moment, uh, it's uh, really not helping. To put things into perspective, back in 2008, when oil was $144 a barrel, uh, the pound was worth $2. And the highest anyone paid that year for fuel was only £1.20. So you can see the effect that the exchange rate is having on the price of the pumps. Uh, and, and how much higher do you think the average price of petrol and diesel could go? Uh, it's, it's hard to say, but um, the, the price of diesel on the wholesale market now is around £1.56 um, delivered. And then you add retail margin of seven pence a litre and VAT, and you're getting towards two pounds, but that would need to be sustained. Um, the price of petrol is a little bit uh, off that, fortunately, uh, but you're going to see uh, two pounds become a common sight on lots of forecourts, particularly the smaller forecourts, and of course on the motorway. Um, this isn't a good time, and if oil gets stayed higher, um, that the prices could definitely rise. Something that BBC Breakfast viewers tend to notice a lot is when the price of oil goes up, petrol and diesel prices very quickly follow. When the price of oil comes down, it seems to take much longer for the price drop to feed through to the petrol forecourts. Why is that? Uh, that's the uh, rocket and feather we often talk about in fuel pricing. Uh, unfortunately, when the price does rise, retailers are going to protect themselves from that. So they all buy at different stages. So any time the price changes, it always takes around two weeks for it to filter through to the whole uh, fuel forecourt network. Uh, but they are going to protect themselves. So we saw this uh, clear example of this before Christmas when the wholesale price fell, the oil fell, uh, everything fell, but apart from retail prices, when uh, uh, retailers were th thinking that things were going to go back up, and of course uh, they didn't for some time, so they actually benefited considerably during December. This is something that really needs to change, but at the moment uh, it's hard to criticise them because their wholesale costs are rising and they're having to pass that on at the pump. So today, if we see a rise of uh, a penny on when yesterday's prices come in at uh, around 9.30, uh, that could take us to a £100 tank for an average uh, family petrol car. OK, in which case, if the retailers have very little room for manoeuvre, what could be done? Because we've already seen the Chancellor cut five pence per litre uh, when it comes to fuel duty. That was back in March. What more would you like to see done? What more realistically could be done? The five p a litre cut was historic and uh, welcome at the time. Uh, it was unfortunately pretty much absorbed by wholesale prices going up straight away. But also retailer margins seemed to be a little bit more in their favour just after the cut compared to the 30 days before. Um, we would like to see the chance to go further, um, either with fuel duty or with VAT. At the moment, VAT alone is equating to 30 pence a litre. Uh, and of course, the higher the price goes on the wholesale market, that retailer margin delivery, uh, on top of that goes VAT and the chance to make even more money. So I think something needs to be done either with one or the other, uh, but that would definitely help drivers at the pumps because we know how important the car is to people. Eight in ten people tell us uh, from our long-term REC research that they would struggle to get by without having access to a car. 
So the car is very important to the economy and vehicles and traveling by car is very important to the economy. So the Chancellor definitely needs to do something to help. OK, uh, Steve, thank you very much. Steve Williams from RAC Fuel Watch there. Uh, and we'll have uh, some advice, some tips on what people can do to make that a tank of fuel go as far as possible. We'll speak to an expert with some driving tips, so we'll share that with you a little later. Do you think you drive e economically? Sorry? Do you think you drive economically? I think, well, I don't use the car very much, actually. Um, I tend, tend to take the train or I cycle, but I'm a fair weather cyclist, I'll be honest. If it's raining, Absolutely not. But I do try, you know, it's things like keeping your tyre pressures at the right, right level, uh, not, not... Constant speed. Constant speed, not braking too hard. I'm not giving away all, all the tips now. I'm not the expert, but we'll find out from, uh, from, from our driving expert what, what people can do. Because those little things, it doesn't sound like much, but day after day after day, every journey, it adds up. Yeah. Ben? 8.34. So you will know this already. Petrol prices already at a record high. They're expected to rise even further today. It's funny, isn't it, Ben? Because we, we kind of, everyone knows the story. The petrol prices uh, are rising a lot. Today, there's a kind of a marker which sort of sets a precedent, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, you could be forgiven for thinking, hang on, you've said this before, <laughs> it's at a record high. That's because day after day, we're seeing new record highs being set and people are really feeling that. The marker that you're talking about potentially the cost of filling up the average family car could hit £100 for a full tank of petrol. Let me explain the details of why that is. Good morning to you from the BBC Breakfast petrol station, virtual petrol station. Filling up this morning will cost you on average more than £1.80 per litre. That is a leap of more than two pence a litre since Monday and the biggest single price jump in 17 years. It means the cost of filling an average petrol car, say a Ford Focus with a 55-litre tank, is now more than £99. And the RAC thinks the cost could reach an eye-watering £100 as soon as today. Diesel prices are also at a record high, costing an average £1.86 per litre. The cost of filling an average family diesel car is already at more than £102. So, is there anything that we can do to save a bit of money on fuel? Let's speak to Neil Gregg, a driving expert at I Am Road Smart. So, what can we do then, Neil? Well, there's lots of things you can do. The research is quite clear that if you apply eco-driving techniques, you can make good long-term savings, real money, which will allow you to spend that money on other things. There's a couple of different things. There's things you can do to the vehicle, such as removing excess weight, taking off roof racks, taking, taking weight out of the boot, uh, making sure your tyres are properly inflated and the, and the vehicle is well maintained. But the main savings tend to come from you as a driver, your driver behaviour. If you can anticipate and plan more, then you can make substantial savings on your fuel bills. How much difference does that actually make, though? I mean, if the cost of filling a tank is going to be £100 and this saves, uh, you know, a penny or two on each journey, how much difference does it actually make? Well, the really big wins are air conditioning. Uh, it's estimated that on a hot day, air conditioning can add 25% to your fuel consumption. So, you know, minimise your use of air conditioning if you don't have to use it. And the second big one is speed. If you can stick to the speed limits, at 75 miles an hour, you use 20% more fuel than you do at 60 miles per hour. So simply slowing down and sticking to the speed limits will give you an immediate benefit. You'll see an immediate gain there. But it's also things like anticipating the flow of traffic, um, not rushing up to the lights, that the biggest enemies of uh, good fuel consumption are heavy braking and heavy acceleration. So doing everything smoothly, anticipating the red light, the junction ahead, trying to uh, run up to coast up to the junction without actually stopping, because stopping and starting are going to be one of the major, major issues as well. And of course, if you can avoid peak hour driving with all its uh, stopping and starting, accelerating in first gear, then that will also help you as well. Um, when you talk about checking the tyre pressures, making sure they're at the, the optimum level, how often realistically should people be doing that? I mean, you can't do it every journey, can you? Well, I think you need to start thinking about driving with at the fuel with these sort of prices, almost like at Olympic sports. It's lots of these little wins, these little gains cumulative together will actually get you some extra real savings. So looking after your car, checking the tyre pressures, you should be doing that weekly anyway, but also making sure you're not carrying excess weight in the boot, for example. Those golf clubs don't need to be in there if you're not going to the golf club. 
Ultimately, if you can cut out short journeys as well, because uh, for the first four miles when your car is still cold, that's when it uses most fuel. So cutting out short journeys, avoiding peak times, the stop start, and sticking to the speed limits, these are things you can start doing today to actually save some money. And then when, when people are looking at ways to save money, because the cost of living pressures are being felt in so many aspects of life, the temptation might be that if your car is due for a service but it seems to be running fine, you could leave it a bit longer, save a bit of money in that way. Uh, are there things that people should be checking that they can easily and safely do themselves if they are putting off the car service, maybe by a month or two? It's a difficult one. Modern cars require a lot of modern servicing techniques. A lot of modern cars, the average person can't even get access to service things. So we would always recommend you use a professional service agent when you're servicing your car. You don't need to change things here. A well-maintained car serviced once a year to the manufacturer's guidelines is going to be as efficient as it can be. Uh, so you don't really need to worry too much about that. We would certainly not recommend any savings such as trying to cut back on servicing, uh, looking to buy cheaper tyres, for example, these sort of things. People will be looking to make these savings, but ultimately they can be a false economy because they cost you more in the long run. Are you finding you run an organisation or you're part of an organisation that, that does driver training, advanced driver training? Are you finding that perhaps people are being put off driving because of this and they're looking for alternatives because it's simply unaffordable at the moment? At the moment, the Department of Transport are still reporting that uh, car use is much the same as you'd expect it to be compared to previous years. It's still bouncing back from COVID. Uh, so people are still using their cars because often they have no alternative. It's a good time to start researching those alternatives. Do you have bus services, train services? Can you walk or cycle in your local area? Things you might not have considered before. So certainly look at that wider active travel options as well. No doubt about that. But the government actually stopped subsidising uh, fleet eco-driving training a, a short while ago. And that's clearly been a, a bit of a mistake because fleets can no longer get money to train their drivers in eco-driving eco techniques. We'd like to see that reinstated. But certainly, if you come to the Institute of Advanced Motorists, all our courses, that eco-driving theme runs through all our courses and we will save you money in the long run. OK, well, you've given us plenty of advice. Uh, Neil, thank you very much. Neil Gregg from I Am Road Smart there. Uh, and Charlie Nagat, you know, the, the, we're talking about the air conditioning and the impact that makes. Um, my air conditioning in the car broke a while ago, never got it fixed. I still have the benefit of it, just open the windows. Natural air conditioning, there you go, and it's free. Yeah, but when it's cold. Well, you don't want air conditioning when it's cold, do you? Well, you can have air conditioning and it's, it can be hot. Oh, I put the heater on, but it's the air con that's the, the real drain, isn't it? I'm going to explain the difference between heating and air con to you later. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why your air conditioning's broken. <laughs> See you later.